Lies of P is a bizarre take on the Souls-like genre, owing to the story intertwining Pinocchio with his inability to lie, and Geppetto with his ability to create puppets, rather than undead soulless and demented monsters that we are so used to seeing in these types of games. I don't think people would readily use a harmless story like Pinocchio from their childhood when writing a fictional story about puppets and a disease that only affects humans while the puppets are driven mad, while also combining features in Pinocchio, as his ability to never lie, by using a system that changes your faith as you grow closer to the conclusion of the game. In short, I was pretty apprehensive on how the story would work, but I am genuinely impressed by the results owing to the developer's unique take on this story. Outside of the game being a little too quiet atmospherically, I really enjoyed how well they managed to mix everything together with the belly poke aesthetics, puppets and their movements, along with the challenging combat and bosses combined with the world building. You can genuinely feel the clear influence from Bloodborne, along with the vast amount of variety in terms of builds and weaponry. Instead of being limited to a single type of weapon and its effects, you can mix and combine elements from various handles and blades to make things feel more comfortable to your specific style. If you enjoy daggers, but dislike how short their reach is, you can slap on a long blade and now have a faster, longer weapon, which you can apply even more effects via weapon grindstones and other means. Or perhaps you're the opposite and love heavy hitting weapons, but really dislike how utterly slow that they swing. Slap on a medium or light handle and watch that speed increase. It's wonderful that you have this diversity. It plays just like every other game in this genre. Elden Ring, Bloodborne, and even Dark Souls. You know if you know. Bosses are difficult to deal with and exploration is brutal. However, despite not being as violent as Dark Souls, it lacks any sense of tension because you have regular access to resting areas during the entire game. One thing that stands out the most in this game is its irritating parry and dodge mechanics. While I'm used to it in other games like Bloodborne and Dark Souls, it does it in such a way that it doesn't feel fluid, but rather very delayed, while also being severely limited to your current power, meaning you can only parry once, and then you need to stack it up again with more strikes or use an injector to gain back that charge. Due to prior experience with these games, utilizing is quite tough. A perfect guard was far more rewarding because it was always ready. There is a lot of things to explore, from mysteries to emote interactions, secret locations, and many other things that'll keep you engaged in the game as well as the universe and lore. Because of the durability system, the game includes elements such as the ability to shatter opponents' weapons, as well as features such as knocking over bosses for high damage or backstabs, which isn't overly fancy. I can't say that I'm a major fan of Souls-like gameplay, primarily since the vast percentages of them do not really feel like they're trying to be unique to themselves. This game is bizarre thanks to its story, but still manages to maintain both a good story with challenging gameplay that is both frustrating enough to feel rewarding to finally succeed, all the while remaining a Souls-like that isn't your average Souls-like. So if you're interested in searching for a game that tries to be tough while also still delivering something different than your regular Souls-like, then this is the game for you. You should absolutely look into it since, while it may appear bizarre on its surface, it has its sights set on what it wants to be.